How are we doing everybody? Welcome to Ross Heritage Golf. Today we are talking about the release. Um, we've been talking about the journey coming in towards the downswing pre-impact. If you've missed those videos, definitely watch those because otherwise it could be easy to get lost. And similar to the other videos, if you get lost in today's video, then what we've got is on the ground, we've got a large cane representing the target line. And as long as the shaft of the golf club is pointing down towards the ball to target line, then you are on plane and you're doing a good job. The reality is that's all that matters. As long as you can keep the shaft pointing down towards the ball to target line, that's all that matters, right? What I suppose I get concerned about when we talk about the release is what people end up doing in terms of from an amateur's perspective. So what George, you're gonna demonstrate two things for me first, right? You are going to demonstrate, well, you're gonna demonstrate your swing. So George is somebody who grips it stronger. <laughs> you laugh at that. So George is somebody who has a stronger left arm position than I do, right? So if you bring us into pre-impact first and parallel, lovely. Now what will happen with George's golf swing is, like a lot of professionals, is that he likes to open up the shoulders more. So you can see the way that delays the release. Now George coming in towards this, and you'll see this when obviously I demonstrate it as well, because of his arm and because of the way he holds the club, basically to get his club face square he just would need to allow the club to down cock on, lovely. And then as George continues to swing through, you would see the way he'd be able to hold onto this shaft angle as he swings all the way through. Keeps moving through, then what we do, take us that position when your left arm horizontal, George, on the way through for us. So what we would see here is that George would basically, because of his grip, be delaying this to the point where then his left arm would roll, which is what we're gonna talk about in today's video as well. Now, if I just, if you kindly swap places, George, so, I would be weaker in the left hand than where George is, which means again pre-impact, I would have to introduce more of a rotation of this lead arm to get me back onto plane, because if I copy George's movement then I would end up being off plane. And again if you get lost in that, get yourself a ball to target line <clears throat> and a laser pen and you won't get lost. But what we can start to see is that although I would be changing how much rotation is needed to get the face square, coming in towards this post impact, it would look very, very similar again, because we are both choosing to hit the ball with open shoulders. If, and there are tall professionals out there who hit the ball with squarer shoulders, then you would start to look more like so, right? So you can see the way that my wrist looks more angulated than it does if my shoulders are open. So if you are opening your shoulders, you're basically delaying the rollover right, and I'm gonna class it as the rollover rather than the release. And if you are somebody who hits it with square shoulders, then potentially the rollover is gonna occur earlier. The reality is, and the message that I'm trying to get across, is that even though if you can demonstrate left arm and let the, ro the club roll over, the rollover is going to be, so if you hold that there for me, so the rollover here, so this movement is going to be a very natural movement based on a couple of things. One, potentially the left arm again, obviously as it's slowing down, right, the club is potentially going to catch up and, and kind of cause this sort of force for the club to move over. But second to that, it's actually anatomically very difficult to restrict any rotation. Exactly, yeah, you do that, hold it off, yeah. Do you see what I mean? It's, it's a physically very uncomfortable to do, so it's not impossible, right? And there are some great golfers that have hit it with an entire drive hold. But for myself, I'm very limited on this side as opposed to on my other side. So I don't probably have a choice physically than to allow the club to roll, even if I try to hold on to it. So the point of this video is at no point, and my only sort of, not frustration, but my only thing that I don't like is when amateur golfers are actively trying to use the trail hand. But my hesitation is that what I suppose I'm saying is that whether you grip it weaker, whether you hit it with open shoulders, square shoulders, effectively the concept of playing is exactly the same, it just it looks different. So as opposed to open shoulders to square shoulders, as you've demonstrated to show as open shoulders, as opposed to bring your shoulders back into square. Exactly, so things will look different is my point, but the concept of playing stays exactly the same. But what will happen at some stage in the golf swing, if you go to that left arm horizontal position, is that the right hand will roll over the left. And therefore that's basically what is happening. 
it's because at some stage it is very difficult to hold this left arm as me and George tried to demonstrate earlier without it rotating at all. It's, for me, it's physically uncomfortable. So my arm will roll, but that's the point. It's not this hand that's forcing it to roll over. And I think that's where sometimes, you know, we can get a little bit lost. If you start trying to use your right hand excessively, then for me, you're just going to be prone to inconsistency in the bottom part of the golf swing. And I think going into the previous lesson, the only reason why you would feel like you hit it better with a roll is because you're not on plane coming in towards if you demonstrate that, you know, similar to what I did in the last video. Yeah, exactly like George is demonstrating here. If you come under plane or off plane, then you're going to feel like you need your right hand to help you out. Whilst if you come, <laughs> if you come, that was good. Whilst if you come on plane, so if you demonstrate that again, slowly yeah then you won't need to excessively because if you roll the right hand excessively from there where's it going to go exactly so you wouldn't do it and this is why we see professional golfers they work on the feeling of hitting a fade and the drive hold and that's what i'm talking about and i know there'll be some of you that think oh well, but i bend my arm it's like well yeah that's not the you know there'll be a reason why you're doing that it won't be the answer's not oh let's force it this way so Hopefully you enjoy the video. I think that what I'm trying to say is that if you go to that left arm horizontal position one last time, um, yeah, you're going to look like that at some stage. The reason why is one, because of some of the forces. Yeah, good. One, because of some of the forces that are occurring on the club. And the second thing is just anatomically, it's very hard to delay that that long. It's just, it's physically uncomfortable. So don't roll that. If you're somebody who feels like you don't release the club, then I, I don't think the answer is going to lie in the idea of forcing the release. The likelihood is that you've failed on the backswing or in transition, which is leading to your impact not looking desirable. Therefore, your release doesn't look good. Hopefully, you get the message behind the video. Try not to actively use your trail hand to force the roll over. It's not something that I would advocate. And I think it wouldn't give the club face any sort of stability. Always appreciate a thumbs up. Remember, it's absolutely free to press that subscribe button. If you're going to do it, you might as well press the little bell icon. That means you receive notifications every time a new video comes out. Catch you with you guys again soon.